Today we're going to be talking about a pretty significant tragedy that occurred a couple of days ago. But before I talk about it, before I read this article about it, um, I want to give you guys a little bit of background. I've been doing this whole political live streaming thing since early, early, early 2019. And it did not take long into my, you know, sort of descent into the left-wing sphere um, for me to discover the very common tendency among the right to call trans people groomers. You see, back in 2019, um, when most discussion about trans rights and trans oppression was happening online, and this whole, like, you know, uh, gay groomer thing was almost entirely relegated to the internet, there was this tendency popping, among, uh, popping up among the right to call any trans person a groomer. Usually just a quick, instant, okay groomer. That's what they'd say. Kind of like okay boomer, but it's okay groomer. And this became like the right's go-to insult slash like a uh, troll to trans people, right? The implication being that like trans people are groomers because they are trans or um, more notably as we've started to see their propaganda evolve and it leave the internet and enter more mainstream uh, political space. The idea that allowing kids with dysphoria to transition in any way, whether it be changing their name and going by different pronouns, wearing different clothing, um, or even following medically recommended by doctors and the scientific consensus, uh, medical transition, um, the right wants to frame this as being grooming. That is to say, prepping a child for sexual assault. That is what grooming is. Now, not only is the concept of like, like, even if the worst case scenario was true, and what was happening was, like, parents were forcing their kids to become trans, that wouldn't even be grooming. That would just be forcing your kids to be trans. So, it really is just evoking the aesthetic of pedophilia in order to throw it onto the LGBT community in order to, well... How do most people respond when they find out that somebody is a pedophile that wants to hurt kids? How do most reasonable people respond to that? Violent hatred. Violent hatred and disgust. Naturally so as well. So when you try to smear or present LGBT people as being groomers who want to molest and rape children, what do you think people are going to want to do to gay and trans people once they've been convinced they're all groomers who want to rape children? The people who believe that do exactly what happened a couple days ago. The meaning of the Colorado Springs attack. The essential precondition for mass violence is not guns or hate, but a culture of terror, a common imaginary, imaginary that includes the possibility of a mass shooting. My first experience as an out queer person was dancing at a gay club in Boston in 1982. This is an article. Um, when I was 15, interesting. The club, like all other gay bars I'd see, uh, seen, had windows painted black and only a tiny sign. You had to know the club was there and you had to know what it was. Like most other gay clubs, it didn't serve Coors beer. The Coors Brewing Company of Golden, Colorado was accused of using polygraph tests to weed out gay people from the pool of potential employees which the beer maker denied. Of course they did. This is only a small part of the company's record of discrimination and queer people were only one of the communities involved in the decades long boycott. A decade later, when Colorado residents by a plurality voted to, to amend the state constitution in a way that essentially inscribed anti-gay discrimination, the gay and lesbian community began boycotting the entire state of Colorado. The U.S. Supreme Court later ruled that the amendment was unconstitutional. Such was the imprinting on my teenage brain that when I heard about the shooting in Club Q, an LGBTQ venue in Colorado Springs, which left five dead and 18 injured, I thought, of course, Colorado. I wasn't the only journalist with a long memory. Early coverage of the shooting noted uh, the state's and the town's history of anti-gay organizing. So this history has- this town has a history. Let me see the article. Um, I prefer just, like, reading it with just my face on screen. I don't know why. I think it looks better because scrolling text looks weird on streams. Maybe it's just my bitrate, but I haven't gotten it to not blur up everything yet. The accused shooter- this is on The New Yorker, by the way. I'll, I'll link the article if anybody wants to be able to read along with me. 
It's just showing like text scrolling on screen usually fucks up the bitrate, and my internet's been scuffed today. The accused shooter, though, is 22. Too young to remember Colorado's anti-gay amendment. He was a young teenager when the state recognized same-sex marriage. He probably has no idea that gay bars used to be forbidden from sight. The idea that you can explain a mass shooting by where it happened is silly. The idea that politics, including the politics of hate, can explain a mass shooting is only slightly less silly. People need little inspiration for finding someone to hate to render less than human, if they are into that type of thing. Panicked, we rush to attach history and meaning to mass shootings so that we can assimilate them into our minds. But the meaning of terror is senselessness. The day of the Club Q shooting, I saw a movie that purports to explain the made... What made the Russian war in Ukraine possible? Called Man... Is this like some fucking bullshit article? Are you kidding me? The, fir the first article that comes up about this is some bullshit about how actually it's not hate that led to this shooting. People that want to do violence will just do vi- What? Okay, so there you go, guys. We've got the liberal coverage of this shooting. What a, what a fantastic way to start this segment out. I go to find an article that talks about this, and it's some liberal op-ed about how, no, guys, this isn't because of hate or some propaganda movement. This is because um, people, uh, they just do violence, and, and, you know, violence just happens because people want to do violence, and they'll find any excuse. Uh, okay, I guess. Anyway, what actually happened was uh, at a place called Club Q, uh, which was a, uh, a nightclub in Colorado Springs, a 22-year-old gunman came in and uh, he shot 15 people, injuring, I think 19 was the total amount of people injured. 15 people were, like, shot, and I believe five people died. Is that the correct numbers, chat? Um, I, I believe that's correct. Um, now, the shooter was actually stopped by a, um, a, uh, a veteran trans woman who, like, not, like, veteran trans, as in, like, she's been a trans woman for a long time, you know, she's a vet to the ship, but, like, actual, like, military veteran, um, trans woman who just, like, absolutely fucking 25 injured. Oh, five dead, 25 injured. Okay. Um, so it's updated. Basically just, uh, stomped the ass of the shooter. Um, so absolute hero behavior, though there should not have needed to be a hero there that night. There should not have needed to be a hero there that night, but unfortunately, some people in chat are saying that the person who stopped the shooter was a um, drag queen. That is actually misinfo. The person, um, uh, the people at the uh, event have clarified that the media has falsely reported, a lot of me liberal media outlets have falsely reported, the trans woman who stopped the shooter was a drag queen because they want to form some narrative that some strong military guy came and saved the day, when in reality, it was a trans woman that came and saved the day, who's a military vet. The mainstream media doesn't really seem to want to... They don't want to... They, they can't make a narrative out of that, that people are going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just doesn't... It doesn't work, I guess. They decided to misreport. I, I can't tell you why. This shooting was pretty much all of the evidence points to the idea that this shooting was perpetuated by somebody on the far right, um, in fact, this person was the grandson of a fairly prominent GOP lawmaker um, and uh, propagandist figure on the right. And, uh, well, I mean, he went to a uh, gay nightclub to shoot the place up right after they made a post uh, about Trans Day of Remembrance and how they were going to have children there. And he shot up the place hours after that Facebook post. So I think it's pretty obvious what the motivations were there. Especially when you consider the fact that people like Libs of TikTok and Matt Walsh have been inspiring uh, crazy right-wingers to uh, send death threats and bomb threats to children's hospitals they report are supposedly um, giving children, uh, you know, top surgery. Um, you know, they'll just send their fans to go send, uh, uh, hey, Zan the trans woman wasn't a vet? No? Y you already were wrong in chat earlier about the person who did it being a tra trans woman, so... I'm pretty certain it was a vet, dad, and a trans woman. So there was a dad who was a vet and a trans woman that took him? Okay, I'm sorry. Regardless, the shooter was stopped and a trans woman was involved in stopping the shooter. It was cool. Regardless, though, how has the right responded to this? Well, you see, the right kind of has to walk a very, very fine line on this because they are the people that caused this to happen. They have been pushing nonstop to basically create a narrative that LGBT people are groomers and rapists that need to have something done to them in order to stop them. And now, exactly what they wanted is happening. 
So they need to encourage more of this. They need to signal to their audience, this is good, more of this. This is what you guys have to do. Keep killing these gays, keep shooting up nightclubs is what they want to tell their audience, but they can't outright say that, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what the right is saying instead. My favorite has to be this Matt Walsh tweet, which is pretty much just him saying he feels more motivated to hate on LGBT people after the shooting than ever, but tries to spin around the blame onto the left. It's actually pretty great. Look at this. Leftists are using a mass shooting to try and blackmail us into accepting the castration and sexualization of children. So, so calling trans people groomers, once again. Um, these people are just beyond evil. I have never felt more motivated to oppose everything they stand for with every fiber of my being. Despicable scumbags. This, the direct translation is, yes, we got, we killed a bunch of them. Good work, guy who did that. Any of you look at that, do what he did. Follow his example. I am, I've never felt more motivated to keep on pushing hate speech. And guess what? Twitch? Twitter? Or sorry, not Twitch. Twitter? He's not getting banned off Twitter. Matt Walsh is never losing his Twitter platform. Tw uh, YouTube, though? Well, they, YouTube might ban him one day, but they aren't banning him anytime soon. Not as long as he keeps on making them shit tons of money like this. Cis people love to mutilate intersex infants, though? Well, it's not even that. Cis people love to mutilate the genitals of, um, of cis children. I'm uncircumcised, thank God, but a lot of boys born here in America are circumcised with absolutely no say. They're, they're babies. Their parents decide, nope, you're getting circumcised, and, uh, that, that's just allowed. That's just completely allowed. It's legal. That's actual genital mutilation. They don't care about that, though, and you'll never see them complain about it because that's a uh, religious freedom type thing. And it has nothing tangentially to do with being LGBT, so they can't weaponize it to try to claim, like, like gay people are, are like, mutilating kids or anything. So, like, they don't actually care about kids. This is all just a shield to attack LGBT people and justify their murder. And then, of course, you've got Tim Pool, who is also a fascist, but very good at hiding it, saying, We shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do prevent the violence and stop the grooming? Club Q had a grooming event. We shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. So just straight up, j just straight up, the shooter stopped the ch a grooming event. Just, just straight up justifying it. Just, they, they, they just straight up justifying it, but not outright saying it. And this is all it takes, guys. This is all the dog whistling it takes. There is enough plausible deniability here that Tim Pool would be able to worm out of it if I ever tried to hold him down on this. You could never hold him down on this. Even though he is praising the shooting, and anybody who's willing to, like, speak honestly can recognize it, he and his fans are so dishonest, so they can use the fact that he didn't explicitly say it was good in this tweet and hide behind that. A lot like what we dealt with with the shoe on head stuff. He didn't he didn't explicitly say the shooting was good even though he d he didn't explicitly say the shooting is good though, guys. So, you know, this is them signaling to their audience they feel empowered, strong, and encouraging their audience to keep doing more of this violent behavior. It's why I encourage you guys to uh, to push the hashtag YouTube hates trans people. What is this? Holy shit, shoe went more mask off. Um, this is an old tweet. Um, this is an old tweet interaction, but yeah. Yeah. This, this doesn't help. I've seen a few fucked up takes for sure, but not gonna lie, I'm pretty uncomfortable with the speed at which some people are willing to accuse LGBT people of being pedophiles in all of this discourse. This is from the 2020, or the 2021, uh, kink at pride discourse she replies they're not pedos they're useful idiots for pedos and the source replies yikes yeah it's from the 2021 pride uh kink at pride discourse remember shu's been doing this every pride like holiday for years now bringing up some like oh look the lgbt people these groomers who happen to be lgbt gotta use my platform to call them out oh wait turns out no real grooming actually happened in this case and i really just ended up stoking a lot of anti-lgbt hate in my audience and setting up an yeah so that was rough regardless though uh shu is not the only one to play into this the right people like matt walsh people like uh tim pool people like uh libs of tiktok 
These are the people who are really pushing it. The people who will weaponize anything that they can use in order to paint LGBT people as acceptable targets of violence. And that's all they're doing. Their goal is simply to paint trans people to their audiences as acceptable targets of violence. Anyway. Um, with all that said, uh, I don't, don't expect any media outlets to cover this well. We, we just read a, like, liberal, like, a liberal excerpt from The New Yorker by somebody who's LGBT from Colorado having a dumb shit take on this, completely, to, like, completely separated from the understanding of, like, what propaganda has led to all of this, right? Like, liberal media outlets took years to catch up with the alt-right rabbit hole thing. You guys know that, right? Like, if, if you remember back to, like, 2016, that era, like, up until... It literally took years for the mainstream media to catch up with, like, what... the lev Like, the liberal mainstream media to catch up with what the right was peddling online and to start responding to it in any substantial way. Like, it wasn't until Christchurch that I feel like most of the mainstream media really realized how much far-right, re like, reactionary radicalization had happened and been a problem online. And then for a couple years, we saw a lot of recogniz recognition of that. Now, though, it really doesn't seem like mainstream media outlets have been caught up with what the right-wing propaganda has even been around this issue. Some have, but, like, how the fuck can you not even mention the widespread anti-LGBT bills getting passed in an op-ed about this shooting? Like... <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell icon, follow my social media. You can support me um, through the links in the description. As always, with all that said, no matter how you support me, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.